What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode, I wanna introduce you to a tool that's so incredible, that's so amazing, that it's gonna blow your mind, absolutely. Like, right out the back door. It's gonna be, it's gonna be gone. Editor X is a professional web designing tool that allows you to build custom made and complex websites without having to write millions of lines of code. It's browser based, it's easy to use, and it's jam packed full of business solutions like e-commerce and blogging and tons more. Editor X allows you to make professional websites in a fraction of the time. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's get started. All right, I have my browser open. Editor X is a fully browser-based tool. So all you need to do is open up your browser and go to editorx.com to learn a little bit more about Editor X. Here on the page, they're gonna tell you everything you need to know. Why don't we just click start now and you can either sign up for a free account or you can go ahead and log in if you already have one. That's right, the accounts are free but then each site that you create is able to have its own site license. That's actually kind of nice because you can experiment and have multiple projects and multiple sites going on and then only actually pay for the ones that you're using. Pretty cool. That being said, why don't we create a new site, a brand new site, and start from there so I can show you some of the features of Editor X. It's gonna take us to the template section where we can either choose a template to start from or a blank canvas. Why don't we choose this product showcase right here? We will start from there so that we have some content on the screen we can actually play with and add to and manipulate and you're gonna see how easy and seamless it is. Okay, we are loaded up and we are in the Editor X editor interface. I know it's a little weird to say, but this is the editor interface. And as we scroll around, you can see I'm just hovering over objects and I get blue kind of bounding boxes around all elements. That means I can select those elements and I can mess with them, play with them, change them, edit them, do all sorts of cool stuff to them. Now, if you've used other website builders, this might be similar in some ways, but it's gonna be different in a lot of ways. Let me show you some of the key features of Editor X. At the very top, you're gonna to see that we have the page that we're currently on, and then we also have the breakpoint that we're currently viewing this project in. We're looking at the desktop version right now. We could tap tablet and then mobile to see the changes that will happen as the site kind of ebbs and flows between screen sizes. We can also just grab the handles on the left or right hand side and just pull those in and out to see how things will actually ebb and flow like as the screen actually changes. So that's pretty cool as well. We can view our site in different breakpoints, but we'll also have really custom tailored control on how things look in all of those breakpoints. And if we wanna add more breakpoints, we can just by customizing them like that. On the right hand side, you'll see anything that we do and if we mess it up and move things around, we can always undo and go back. So that's a really, really nice thing. And we also can click on any element and open up the inspector panel. This is a contextual panel that'll allow you to do lots of different things. It'll allow you to you know, align things and change them from fixed to fluid. A lot of control over positioning and size, margins, padding, and maybe even a little things that have to do with anchor links and so on and so forth. So just some things that are contextual to the element that you're selecting. But on the left-hand side, we can, we can actually just tuck that away. And on the left-hand side, we can open up any of the other tool sets that we wanna use. It's gonna be really, really cool. Check this out. We can head to the add screen. We can add different design elements, pre-built sections, layout tools like containers and light boxes and some other really cool ones that we'll talk about in a second. But you got all the other stuff too, like text and buttons and menus, media. And again, you can add this, but immediately you can edit anything to be exactly how you want it to be, which is really, really cool. Uh, we have like decorative things, contact forms, social media, turn on the blog, turn on the content management system. You can turn on your membership system. All of that can happen right here. Pretty cool stuff if you ask me. Next up, we have the layers panel. We open that up just like so, and we can see the entire page and we have each of the sections. Sections inside of Editor X are these big, uh, uh, horizontal boxes kind of moving across the page. And if you wanna add another one, you can literally just click in between any section, and you can add another one. In our layers panel, just like design software, we can rename this these sections like uh, extra ordinary, right? We know that that's that section. And down below, this section here is like B, first, right? Well, if we want B first to be above extra, we just switch it like so, and it's literally that easy to switch things around. So super nice to do. You can also 
uh, not only move things around, but you can change them around in the individual layer stacks. This is gonna affect the Z indexing of different elements, things that overlap. You do that right here in the layers panel. Pretty cool stuff. Next up, you have the masters panel. We have master elements throughout our project or throughout our site. For instance, we have this master footer. This means that if we create other pages and we have this master footer on it, if I change it in one place, it's gonna change it everywhere, which is absolutely amazing, super dope. You don't just have to have the header and the footer, but you can take any element on the page, for instance, this section right here, and you can set as a master. And now that piece is a master as well, and you just reuse them. It's so modular, so scalable, it's so awesome, okay? So those are masters, really, really easy to understand. Next up, you have the pages. We don't have any other pages, but we could create one really quick if we wanted to. A new page, maybe it's an about, us page like that. And you'll see that I have a menu up here that's actually already managing all the menus. And um, it is including all the pages like in the site. And so whatever we name it here will absolutely be named there in, in, the, uh, in the menus bar. If we don't wanna show that, we can actually mess with it and say, hey, I don't want that to show up. I just want it to be like maybe a hidden page on the site. And that's how easy it is to do. It's really, really simple stuff. Next up, you have the styles for the site. This is where you can dictate colors and typography and you can reuse those uh, colors and uh, different fonts and selections right here. This keeps everything really consistent across your site. Your H1, your H2, your H3, the colors that are used for each of those. Once you assign them to those pieces of typography or those buttons, it's gonna use them every single time, which is super cool. What do we have here? We have a site um, that as we preview it, okay, uh, we have some moving video elements, pretty cool. And as we scroll down the page, we have some animations of buttons. We have animations of text. This is all actual text, it's not images. These are images though. We have buttons that we can click and we can sign up that will anchor us down the page. Pretty cool, lots of animation going on. All of this is gonna come right, like baked in, right out of the box. You'll be able to do all of this stuff. So with that being said, let's go back and edit the site or we could publish the site. If we publish the site as it is, Editor X is gonna give us a URL that we can then go check out the site, share it with our client or with our friends, have them pretty cool. We can do it just like that. And then we can connect a domain to it if we want to by simply upgrading. But let's go back and do a little bit more work. Let's edit this thing. Let's say, for instance, we really like this video, but I think we want to change the sizing of it and the placement of it. Editor X has this really cool thing. Let's open up our, um, our inspector panel. It has this docking position system. So when I move things around, whoops, let's undo that. When I move things around in Editor X, you can see in the top right and left of this object, it is docking it to its parent container. Everything's gonna work off of a child and parent relationship. If we click on this video box and move it around, it's docking it to the edges of this container. And it will stay there as we start to ebb and flow our design. If we wanna dock it somewhere else, we can smartly dock it over to the right-hand side and it stays positioned there. If we wanna dock it maybe to the left and the right, okay, we can come in here like this and turn on docking to the left and the right and that's gonna change the way that it resizes across our website. Any element that we have, once we get them the way that we like them, everything will actually is recursive. Everything will actually drip downhill or cascade downhill to the lower breakpoint. So we're on desktop right now. Everything that we have here is going to stay unless we have some other sort of setup for that breakpoint. For instance, we like the way this thing is here. We wanna go ahead and right click on it and we wanna use on all breakpoints. Now, if you click over, you can see that our video is trying to do the same thing on all the breakpoints. It's just not really looking good though, is it? So why don't we back up and realize that there was already some smart kind of implementations of breakpoints and changing the content, and we can go ahead and do that. Why don't we actually do this? Why don't we just fill the entire space with the video on tablet, and then when we come down here, the whole thing is actually just 
hidden. That looks pretty cool to me. That is how simple it is to move things around. Let's click a little deeper on individual elements and see how we can change them. If I click on some text here, I can edit that text. And this is where I get all of my, all the abilities to change between all of my preset headings and typographic scale and everything that's in there. Maybe change the font, scale the text. So right now this text you'll notice is actually scaling. It gets large to small. Instead of having a fixed size, I just turned on scale text and it'll be anywhere between 29 pixels and 176 pixels. Pretty cool stuff, okay? Let's talk about a few more basic concepts inside of Editor X. As you move things around, you actually are always docking them to some sort of container. But let's say we want a new container. I'm gonna go ahead and go in between this section and I'm gonna hit the grid section. This is gonna allow me to use CSS grid, which is a super modern way to build websites. It's fantastic. I'm gonna do a simple three by three grid, just like so. And you can see that it's dropped that grid on the screen for me. Now with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just shrink this site up a little bit so I can see it. And I'm going to add a couple of things. How about some media? How about an image that can go right there? And let's just make sure we're dragging it into our grid up here instead of the other spot. And why don't we do also a video? I think that could be pretty cool. So let's go to media. Let's go to a single video player, like something like this. I'll just drag that into place. And then why don't we also do a button? Because buttons are always fun, aren't they? Um, uh, yeah, let's do a button. Let's do like this, read more button. We'll pop that in just like so. Now, here's a really cool thing. We can take our image and we can move it into place and we can make it expand to the areas of that grid. We can unexpand it. Maybe it may make it span the gambit here and do that again, and it'll take that, that entire space. Let's take our video and do a little bit of overlapping. We'll move our video down, move it over like that. And uh, why don't we actually do one more thing with our image. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the focal point. I wanna make sure the focal point of this image is always on the peak of the mountain. Now, no matter how I kind of ebb and flow this photo, it's gonna try its hardest to focus on that peak if it can whatsoever. So let's fill that back up. Let's put this thing right here. Let's go ahead and change a few of the video settings. Like for instance, the behavior. We wanna make sure that it's automatically playing. How is it paused by clicking? And it's going to be a looping video. So let's go ahead and do that. Do we want sound? Yeah, let's enable the sound. And let's put this button, make this button really big and make it overlapping something right there. Now, when we preview this design, we scroll down, we can see our video is automatically playing. There's no music involved in this, but we can click on any of these objects, resize everything. And why don't we do one last change for the day? We'll just do this new section that we've created. What does that look like when we jump down to the tablet view? It's gonna to try to look the same. Maybe we should do a completely different thing. Maybe we should undock this, span the gambit for the entire thing, and now focus this video up to these sides and the button right there. That's gonna happen differently than our desktop design. So we had our original desktop design, now we have our tablet design. Why don't we jump down to mobile? It's gonna try to do the same thing that we applied to the tablet mode, but let's do it a little bit simpler. Something like this, and we'll put our video right in the middle and maybe we'll make that span that gambit as well, those, those grid boxes, just like that. And so now we can preview again, and let's look at this thing in the different breakpoints. So we have our laptop. Why don't we just uh, go down to tablet and find our section. There's our section with our special tablet kind of layout, and then there is our mobile layout as well, exactly like we made it. Well, that's it. That's Editor X in a nutshell. I'm not gonna lie here. I'm really, really into it. I dig it. The no code movement is here, it's arrived, I'm on board, and I gotta say, this is a great addition to this no code revolution. It is approachable, it's easy to learn, it is fun, it's all sorts of scalable, it's built on modern technology, it's not janky, like the code that it produces is really, really nice. We're talking Flexbox and CSS Grid, we're talking JavaScript animations, and again, it's for every level out there, for somebody who has no idea how to design and launch a 
website, or for an expert that wants to turn on dev mode and get all nitty gritty down in the weeds of the code. It's for everybody. It's pretty legit. So again, I'm into it. I'm really excited. And in the following few videos, I'm going to take you through a project. We're going to build something from start to finish. We're going to launch it. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So join me for the next few videos as we continue checking out Editor X. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and code and more videos on Editor X coming out soon, so stick around. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. I wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think about the new Editor X? Let me know. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and checking out these new tools that are gonna save you tons of time, sanity, and give you lots of enjoyment. I'll see you in the next one.